We are going now to enter the relationship between ontology and intelligibility. The question of how all things were created and sustained in human nature. This exposition that we're going to make situates Eugenia as a true idealist. His epistemology could be concisely said to be everything known by the intellect or imagined by the sense can be created in the knower. The connection then between ontology and intelligibility says that in Origenes' work, knowledge presupposes unity of knower and known. So we tend to think as the mind, as the container of the ideas, of what is known. What Irigina is saying is that there is a unity between the two. Whatever the intellect shall have been able to comprehend, that it itself becomes. This statement is so profound. We tend to think that feelings are the things that are going to guide us through reality. This is not entirely false, but we cannot say that this is true. If we put aside knowledge, the intellect, those feelings will only guide us when we know that they're aligned with what we truly know and if what we truly know is true. I have had personal experience with this. I act correctly when I know what the correct action is in the moment where I need to take it. Ex especially when it's something to which I have to react quickly. We tend to think that we react by instinct, like animals. And if this is kind of true in an extreme physical, say, fight situation, even if you're not trained fighter, you might come up with some gesture that allows you to defend yourself, for example. But when it comes to an actual moral action, you need to understand what's right and what's wrong deeply from an intellectual, rational point of view and then integrate it in your action. Okay, so that's why this phrase is so, so crucial. Whatever the intellect shall have been able to comprehend, that itself becomes. And since those ideals are going to be the ones actually at the source of creation, you better have them correctly aligned in order for you to become an actual real moral being. We are still not talking about morality here, but you see where this is going. So, also, only those things which are contemplated by the intellect alone truly are. What does this mean? That just because I have a perception of something that I can empirically affirm to be there, yeah, I have an observation that comes through the senses. Even in those cases, only those things which are contemplated by the intellect alone truly are. The problem with empirical observation is that if you don't have your observations well aligned uh, within the intellect as to where you're going to situate your physical sense observations, if you don't have a good scheme of things of how reality actually is structured, you are going to come to false conclusions because the organization of any data that you make has to be based on the actual basis of the intellect, which is previous to any empirical observation. This is crucial for science. Science cannot be based in laws that might change because the universe changes with them, yeah? 
or it cannot they cannot change from the from a perspective in which we start knowing about things from a shaky foundation yeah from the point of view of, of modern science that modern science through popper that says hey we are going to create certain theories and we are going to regard them as truth for as long as we don't find exceptions in them that means that we are on shaky ground we need to find actual laws and even if it's true that in the physical world through empiricism we're not going to find them what Irigina is pointing at here too is that we must be able to find them in ideas themselves because it is our mind it is human nature that it is actually at the source of the world this can be also misinterpreted as meaning that because you're an idealist it is you who is creating the world itself not the creator yeah so we have to be very precise on the way we talk about these things so that we not we don't confound one thing with the other and we end up in a desert of action and a desert of ideas okay so how does he argue for this the central idea about creative activity is that true essence of all things resides in their cause it is this whole concept of zeroing into the actual cause so that when we zero in the moment we touch that unity in which no more separation no more duality exists then we have a reflection in the metaphysical realm in which we can start speculating about those things that cannot be perceived will never be perceived not just by the senses but by the intellect as well okay and this is perhaps at the core of the connection between mysticism and actual rational truth you cannot take one and go with one and go haywire with it and you cannot take the other and go haywire with it and create all the destruction of which is capable of reason is capable of great destruction when it's wrong so we have to be very humble and very critical so situates it situates the substance of realities in the divine intellect Irigina expands to conclude not only the divine mind but also the human knower so we are intimately connected from our essence to the divine essence this is a crucial aspect of this philosopher and is starting to be one of the reasons why i love it so much yeah because there's no extrinsic separation yeah not even a extrinsic separation and intrinsically both are in the same core in the center of the clock remember the image so human ability to analyze and collect into unity the various aspects of natura results in knowledge of external things being born in the mind so in order to establish and talk about the relationship between things things in themselves and the concept of the thing in the mind Irigina is going to rely on Augustine again who says in on the Trinity replicas of sensible things in the mind are better than the actuality of those things but we have further problems to solve here and we are going to talk about this in our next slide let me guess to the next slide slowly so I don't do any mistakes with technology so the link between knowledge and being in relation to created minds 
gives us a very surprising and interesting result. This is a quote from the book number four of the Periphysium. Not only every nature which has a concept of that which follows, it is better and superior, but also the concept itself through the dignity of the nature in which it resides greatly excels the object of which it is the concept. That which understands is better than that which is understood, which means knowledge of all things in divine wisdom is superior to the things of which it is the knowledge. The outcome of this line of thinking is the created trinity of human mind, which is skill, and the mind's discipline are contained in the mind of God, and that this concept of the humanity of the human mind and the mind itself are one and the same. Therefore, the substantial definition of human nature is an intellectual concept in the mind of God. The accidental definition of human nature is rational, mortal, animal. The true substance of human nature is nothing else but the concept of him in the mind of his artificer, who knew all things in himself before they were made. And that very knowledge is the true and only substance of the things known, since it is in that knowledge that they are most perfectly created and eternally and immutably subsist. I want to make an incis here. It, and it is, so this also is prominent in Meister Eckhart, which hopefully one day I will talk about Eckhart. I'm pretty... Um, sure there is going to, there is going to be uh, someone of whom we can gather a lot so so what i wanted to say here is that the true substance of human nature so when we are talking about this let's continue in relation to the knowledge human nature can have of itself Origina, again, his anthropology is negative anthropology as a methodology. So former definitions defines human nature in terms of attributes. So this is what Origina and also Meister Eckhart are going to do. But the danger with all this is that brings us to relativism. And as you can see from what we are talking about now, it is the absolute opposite. Okay, however, it gives you infinite possibilities when you think about these things in real life. Yeah, a true idealist, as uh, Deirdre Karabin is talking about this philosopher, that's what this all means. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Let me do it slowly so that I don't do any mistakes with the technology as I normally do let's see let's go here and now full screen perfect in the human mind a concept exists of all that it understands the rationale for this argument is not on the resemblance of the image to the exemplar but the fact that human nature is given dominion over all living reality in the world so we are now quoting the bible okay so we remember we are doing uh, bible exegesis together with apophatic rationality and they both come together i think it's very powerful to have this line of thinking because if you think the bible is some idle book uh, full of mythology i think you're very mistaken i think it's uh, very profound Never mind already only in the, in the historical terms as to the importance of this book in which everything has been based. Yeah? And hopefully one day we'll talk about law and how the Bible is actually at the core of 
the law as we know it yeah in our civilization adam naming all creatures in genesis must have understood all things in order to name them this is what Irigina says in book number four of the Periphysium, that if Adam was capable of naming all creatures, so that this, this quality, this aspect that humans can actually name things, takes us actually far, far away from pure nominalism. Okay? The concept of the things which are contained within him excels the things of which it is the concept by so much as the nature in which it is constituted excel the things of which the concepts are innate in human nature have their substance in their concepts i think concept here is not just the concept that you can but it's the is the actual innate concept that is embedded in existence itself which is at the source of the living concept of the living human that we actually are in this world for where they have the better knowledge of themselves there they must be considered to enjoy the truer essence so all concept that's that we make through language which is part of that living creation is the tools that we have in this world in order to get there but the actual real concepts it's at the core it's like the 3d is the actual living nature that we are and as opposed to everything that sucks the life out of us that zaps the life out of us yeah excuse my english sometimes if i make mistakes so remarkable it is remarkable because we find here the ontological significance of intelligibility yeah so epistemology and ontology come together and origina in a very intimate connection so the concept of nature that is created in the human mind is the substance of nature itself just as in the divine mind is the substance of the whole created universe it becomes a primordial cause all right let's go to the next slide so we are now let me get out of this one this is number two we're gonna go to number three which is here boom 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 question so there's a question important question how all things were created in human nature when it was created after all other things on the sixth day of creation remember what we spoke about how Irigina changes the order of things from the narrative of the genesis into the ontological the philosophical narrative actually inverts the terms however he will explain why the genesis was actually written like that so the human mind actually creates the things of which it has the concept i have a big question mark here because we need to realize that what we are not saying here is that you see a cat and that means that your mind is creating that specific cat that you see outside yourself in nature yeah it does not mean that and we're going to see it here specifically so the knower is prior to the known so the knower is prior to the known not in time but ontologically yeah so we stem from existence itself actually even further from non-existence itself that's where our nature comes from and it is in that regard that we are the creators of the reality that we see but it's, it does happen only in the ideal realm it does not happen in the physical reality that we see we don't deny the existence of the other we simply say that we belong from the core we belong to the core of reality to the ground to the actual ultimate ground 
of creation. That's where we stem from. That's where all our capabilities come from. And that is the, the very essence by which we can say that there is a connection between being yeah, and knowledge. Okay, so it's it's as profound as that and not as superficial as saying that, oh yeah, I see, I'm, I'm a solipsistic being because everything I see is being created literally by my mind. It's not that. So I am going to now read a, a section from the book number four of the Periphysium. And I'm going to read the whole thing because it's mind-blowing and a little bit confusing at the same time. I think I should be right in saying, says Erugina, that where there is one thing that understands and another that is understood, and where that which understands is of a better nature than that which is understood, the understanding mind or the perceiving sense is prior to the thing which is understood or perceived. There are no problems here yet, is this what I just explained here. But where the things themselves understand themselves, I do not see, says Irigina, what kind of precedence there can be. So there seems to be an intimate connection between the two, but we're going to see, he goes further than this. Although I know that I am, my knowledge of myself is not prior to myself, because I and the knowledge by which I know myself are not two different things. So far, so good. But hear this, that I highlighted here. If I did not know that I was, I will not be ignorant that I did not know that I was. I don't know what this means. I've been thinking about this. And honestly, he seems to be talking about if some entity who has been, say, for example, an animal does not know. So if this animal, for example, did not know that it was, it will not be ignorant that it did not know. So the animal knows, from what I hear here, is that the animal knows that he is ignorant, that he is ignorant about the fact that he doesn't know. So he's not ignorant about the fact that he doesn't know himself. So I do not understand this. So I'm posing this maybe in the comments. Someone can comment because it doesn't make sense, although it's going to make sense, but it's going to be saying the opposite. So I don't know if it's a problem with the translation or I'm just not getting it. But therefore, whether I know or do not know that I am, I shall not be without the knowledge. I guess he's referring to the fall. He's probably referring to the fact that we know that we are and we don't know what we are, but we know that we are. So it is like the first sort of given starting point for argumentation in metaphysics is the fact that there's something instead of nothing and we are part of that. We exist. Yeah. For there will remain the knowledge of my ignorance. So we know that we don't know, but this is not what he's saying here. Yeah, so that's my doubt here. And if everything which is able to know that it does not know itself cannot be ignorant of the fact that it is, it follows that absolutely everything has existed, existence which knows that it is or knows that it does not know that it is. And this is what I don't understand. How can you know that you don't know that you are? Yeah. Maybe you don't know what you are, but if you know that you are, you know that you are. You cannot know if you don't know that you are. 
I guess what he's hinting at here, and we're going to talk about this later, and this is why I think I'm deciphering this in, in real time, is that he, what he's saying is like the starting point of any argumentation is the fact that we exist. Yeah. And even if we, and if, even if we were to not know that we are existing, if, even if we were that unconscious, there still will be that knowledge at whatever level we are, that, that, that spring of knowledge and being is there, that we belong in it intimately. That's why I'm going to say something here. It might seem to have nothing to do with this. But when we talk about transhumanism, which is something that worries me a lot, ultimately, because of this fact that there is an intimate connection that we as human beings, for as long as we are human beings, in whatever state we are in, however fallen, however deep down we have fallen, uh, from our true nature, there's always going to be that spark, that connection, that sort of sense that something's wrong here. I know I'm more than this. I can't put my finger on it, but I absolutely know that I am something that is profound, that is important, that I share intimately with the existence of all existence. Yeah. And I think that's something that you cannot break. Yeah, maybe you, you can control the outer parts of it. You can deceive people to not see it, but you can ultimately not extricate humanity from that. Yeah, because that which is at the core of reality, humanity, human nature actually is. And that's inextricable. Okay, so concerning our, okay, let's go there. In human beings, knowledge of the self and the self, they're not two different things. Knowledge of self is not prior to the self. Yeah? So this intimate connection, this is absolutely essential. If you meditate on this and you really get it, one thing that is going to disappear is the source of all problems that we have, which is fear. So, however, this gets further complicated by this fact the human subject is ignorance of its true substance, since that remains hidden in the mind of God. Yeah, it's essentially, yeah, so we're not going to really ever know. It's just that the search for that knowledge is the spring from which all creative, beautiful, good life stems from okay logical difficulty so this logical difficulty the concept of prior so this a concept so okay the concept is prior to reality is complicated by the fact of human ignorance we come here to the fall the fall is nothing but the separation the ignorance that we feel about who we really are. The moment we realize who we really are, remember we are equal with angels and more because we are the connection between that realm and this realm. Human knowing inherently deficient cannot define itself. So when we talk about angels, I'm going to make a, another comment here. When we talk about angels, it, it doesn't matter what you think of that. It's just layers, yeah? Not hierarchy, but layers of uh, being incarnated in different actual flesh, material flesh and blood beings, okay? So the same way that we can look at animals and they do teach us many things, from which we are sort of disconnected and help us to connect with that aspect of it. However, animals could never make a video like this. Yeah, you'll never see a dog, even a dolphin, making a video like this, like trying to reach that angelic realm. But angels will never share from that connection that we have 
from the flesh together with the mind into being that link between the superior realms, the angelic realms and those lower realms in which we share our existence. Yeah. So human nature, what we are, the responsibility that we have to assume and that we have to ex exercise and that is at the core of our being, at the core of the energy that we are. Yeah. And which is also the, the, the ignorance of which is also at the core of all depression, all violence, all injustice, all government, all uh, stupid laws that we have to obey. And it's all that ignorance comes from not knowing these things. Okay. So to know that one is, is self evident this is the departure point to know that one is is self-evident and this is where all of these might start making sense this is a very sort of intricate way like delving deep into the reasoning as to say actually this thing which is very basic to know that one is is self-evident even if you don't know if you're not not thinking about it that being that that knowledge that you are is the very place in which you exist, is the very place from which you originate, yeah, is the very cause of your existence. So those who do not know that they are, are either not human or dead, yeah. And as Mark Passio will tell you, those who control this world, the manipulators of this world, they call other humans, those who are controlled, those who accept their slavery, they call them the dead. That's what he says. I never heard it from them. However, it makes total sense. And that's why they disrespect us so much. Yeah, which is a very obvious fact of any other peripheral sort of phenomena going on about politics, economics, and, and, and all the rest, yeah, culture in general. So human nature will never know itself completely, even in its final state of restoration to its cause, since that will presume that it will know the mind of God. And yet our nature is intimately connected with it. So next, we're going to see the resolution of the problem of the human mind, creating the things of which it has the concept. Okay, let me check here again where we are. This was number three. We're going to change to number four. Let me go to number four and get the full screen here for me. Now, so next, when, human, when a human being has received knowledge of itself was it in the primordial causes or through the generative process this is a question stated in the periphysium so when the human received knowledge of itself yeah so this very very core essential aspect of being a human is a self-conscious being was it in the primordial causes yeah, stemming from the core of the clock, yeah? Or was it through generative process? Was it in the manifestation that comes from that core? Regina says, of course, that it comes from both. General knowledge comes secretly through the causes. And specific knowledge comes openly in the effects. So, and also through the effects from what we can see in nature, we can uh, deduct what the causes are. So, both are one and the same essence. It's contemplated under two aspects. In the causes, in which it passes all understanding, and in the effects, in which it is known that it is. So the specific knowledge is connected to the fall again, 
For most mighty and most wretched was the fall in which our nature lost the knowledge and the wisdom which had been planted in her and lapsed into a profound ignorance of herself and her creator. Also this general knowledge that is the primordial causes. There is a quote here from the Periphysium that says, so the created wisdom, which is human nature, knows all things which are made in it before they are made. And that very knowledge of the things which are known before they are made is their true and indestructible essence. So what we have here is all the extremes of nature embodied in human nature. Human nature being created and being at the core of all creation. And that's, we have the, that's why we have the capacity of relating with it intimately. We can relate with the universe because our nature stems from the core of the very creation and the creator of that universe. And, the very, and that very fact brings also the contrast of the fallen state and all the things that we can call that that fallen state has created in the negative that actually, and I don't know when Irigen is going to make this distinction, does not include the fact that we live in the body. Yeah, the fact that we live in the body, it is not part of our fallen state. It is actually part of our connection, but it does bring with it certain possibilities that stem from our freedom. Yeah, and if we are really to be free, we are going to be aware that it, so the, let me say this, so the, our fallen state comes from the fact that we are free. So that if we actually really want to be free, whether it is physically in this world, yeah, without governments committing all these unbelievable crimes on the majority of peoples, yeah, as an example, yeah, there's many, many other aspects. And zap in and 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 sucking the fucking life out of us, yeah. Through their stupid systems, through the stupid law, through the future that is coming towards that that we see coming, like blatantly in front of our eyes right now. That contrast and the contrast of uh, I have lost a little bit my train of thought. But you see where I'm going with this. I'm going to get specifically to specifics of the things that are going on today coming from this spiritual, rational, traditional background. Okay? And I'm going to affirm individuality, but I'm going to affirm individuality in a context yeah, of the totality of creation and the context of the totality of humanity as to where humanity as a collective is moving collective as the aggregate of individuals that make their responsible individual decisions yeah so now let's get to the end here so the divine intellect is prior to all things so too intellectual knowledge of the soul is prior to all the things that it knows. There was no creature before human nature, since it is prior to all that was created with it, in it, or below it. Great. So, let's get out of this one. We are now in number four. We're going to get to the last one, okay? Let's get to the last one here. I have many slides today and I also have to do this. Great. So that all things were created in human nature reveals some rather surprising results. The causal capacity of human nature itself 
understanding creates and human nature is nothing other than its intellection. When two people enter into a discussion together, listen to this, this is beautiful, each of us is created in the other. For when I understand what you understand, I am made in your understanding and in a certain way I am created in you. This comes from a philosopher of the 9th century, not the 19th century, the 9th century. It's amazing. There was no creature, either visible or invisible, before the creation of man. Man's creation is prior to those things which were created with it. That is to say, the celestial essence. We touched upon this before. Human nature is equal in status to angelic, that is, before the fall. So exploring the fall in all the ways that you can possibly can, it will give you insights as to the present human condition of slavery, basically. And if you, if you can't see that, that that's the human condition, that says that you are within that frame mind. Yeah? The creation of the substance of man, no less than that of angel, is to be inferred in the creation of light. The reason why human nature is related as having been created on the sixth day, as the conclusion of the creative process, is to demonstrate that all that was previously created is universally understood in human nature. If the story had told of the creation of human nature first, so this is the reason why in Genesis it has to be last, okay, it has to be in the sixth day. However, the creations of the substance of man was created when light was created. Do we have any connection to those principles of light, gravity? So how do we connect to the external world, to the physical laws? You have to get into metaphysics and the connection between consciousness and reality. Otherwise, you will go around in circles. You will not be able to go deeper. You will not be able to actually find anything actually useful, which I think is what's happening with useful or non-destructive. Yeah. So that's why the when it comes to physics, uh, all those... Uh, debates around, for example, free energy are so interesting, yeah, which I would love to get into because there's a lot of problems with mathematics, physics, science and the connection between them, okay, and the connection between them and consciousness. So, what precisely is human intellection? What is it that precisely is human intellection? It is nothing else but the image of God within human nature. So it's not just the, our capacity to think. Yeah. So when Eugenia is talking about intellection, it's not just like my capacity to, to reason or my capacity to, to write a science paper or my capacity... I don't have it, but... <laughs> The capacity of a human who is capable of use their rational intellect, the left side of the brain, shall we say, to do all these things that the left side of the brain is capable of doing, yeah, logic, etc. It's much deeper than that, yeah. What precisely is human intellection? It is nothing else but the image of God within human nature. So let's leave it at that. This is absolutely fascinating, awesome thing to read and think about. I'm loving it.